So today is actually the same day that I filmed the, uh, the little video about my embroidery frame, but I wanted to take the opportunity since it was out to do a little short video introducing this project I'm working on because I've talked about it a lot. I've had it, um, I keep referencing it, but I um, thought maybe you might want to know a bit more about it. Um, so I'm embroidering cotton lawn in a sil in silver, I believe it's pronounced mukesh. Um, they're thin silver strips about a millimeter wide by eh, 20, 22 inches. And what I'm embroidering is a 1780s gown that's housed at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. And the whole dress is embroidered in a lattice work of vines, it looks like. It's floral trailing vines in a, in a uh, square lattice pattern. So I love this dress. I have been trying to hack it for, oh my God, like as long as I've been sewing costumes. Um, and I looked for a million different kinds of ways to do, um, to find similar fabric. So I looked at printing the fabric, I looked at machine embroidery, I looked at just trying to find something that looked similar. And eventually I just said, you know, why not go for it? What the hell? Um, I found the, the, uh, the broad plate, it's also in English, it's called broad plate. Um, and I just, I decided to just go for it. So it's a very long-term project. I've only gotten this far in like a year, but to be honest, I haven't really been giving it my full attention. I might work on just a little few inches at night or something. So, um, but I actually don't mind it because I really like when I have nothing else to do um, instead of just like aimlessly trolling the internet, which I would totally do. Um, I just sit and do this in the evenings and my husband and I watch TV or sit outside and it's very portable. So, and it doesn't take a lot of brain power because it's just one stitch over and over and over again. And one material, I don't have to worry about color, nothing. So anyway, um, I was able to find this silver broad plate. Um, I found it at, I believe it's called embroidery, embroidery material on Etsy. Um, you can probably find it by looking up one millimeter silver mukesh M-U-K-A-I-S-H, I believe. Um, and this is actually, I believe it's copper treated to look silver. So it's very cheap. It doesn't tarnish. I don't actually know what the original dress was embroidered with. I don't know if it was actual silver or if it was a similar material to this. Because um, I tell you, if it was actual silver, it was, that was quite a dress then. <laughs> um, it does show evidence of tarnish, but I could just be patina from age from anything, or could be um, it was silver plated metal. I, I don't know. Um, I would love to find out. I haven't been able to find out yet. Um, but anyway, so because of the geometric nature of the dress and the fabric, I was able to extrapolate a pretty good idea of the patterning of the dress just from looking at pictures. So once I figured out um, about how wide each of these uh, square motifs is, um, I was able to use that as a roadmap and map out the pattern of the dress. Um, I was also helped by, I emailed the Metropolitan and somebody there was kind enough to send me the curatorial notes on this dress. So I included um, things like the dimensions, uh, center back, center front. Um, from there, I was made it much easier to figure out just how big these squares were. Um, I was also able to find out that the dress is not just cotton, but it is cotton lined in silk taffeta which makes a lot of sense because at the, from the pictures, and the Met used to have really good high resolution pictures of this gown up on their website, and they don't anymore. But um, 
you were able to really see up close, see the weave, and you could not see, for as sheer as cotton was and is and looks in the pictures, you cannot see the backside of the, um, the selvages. So, cool thing to note. So it will be lined in silk. Um, but anyway, so once I got a basic plan and I kind of did this by taking pattern paper, writing, uh, sketching out the lines in a diagonal pattern. So it was just lines. It wasn't little trailing vines yet. Um, sketched out the lines, came up with the pattern. Then I made a repeat of one of the squares and it was based on a close-up of the repeat that they had on the Met website. So when I transferred the pattern to each fabric panel, instead of tracing out every single trailing vine square, I was able to put just little X's at each junction of each square. So if you, and I'll, I'll include a picture, but if you look down at my blank fabric, now that I've advanced this, you can see little X's. So what I do is for each row, I've made copies of this, and this is a pattern. So there's an X in the middle, and these each line up with the X's on the fabric. And these guys are the individual um, floral motifs that go in the center. So there's a little X on each of these patterns that matches up with the X in the center of the pattern. So that way, I didn't have to tediously sketch out the whole pattern. I'm able to put it on the frame, get it all lined up on grain, and then I take this, and you can kind of see how it shows up underneath. Take this, pin it, lining up the X's, individually pencil it out, pencil in the appropriate flower, and I work from there. Um, it just seemed easier to me than sketching it all out in advance. Uh, let's see, other things. So. Each of these panels is cut a little bit longer than the skirt panel that it corresponds with so that there's enough to wrap around the dowels. Um, and then I made notes at the top and bottom and um, highly recommended, and I didn't do this first, the first time around, but uh, to keep track as I make the, um, the motifs how many so that I know how many I have left because <laughs> thought I had uh, gone a little further than I had, but I wasn't paying attention. So anyway, so the plan is that I'm going to make up the whole skirt and who knows when I'll be finished with this. So I haven't actually patterned the bodice yet because I could change size. I could learn, I will learn more about bodice patterning. I mean, my, by the time I finish these skirt panels, which are pretty self-explanatory, my skills will hopefully have advanced as they should. Um, and also, I, I don't love the bodice that's actually on the original gown. It's got some really weird um, tabs at the front that I don't know if I hate them or if I like them because they're weird. Um, knowing myself, chances are I'll probably try to make it like exact, but I'm just not sure. Um, so I'm kind of leaving that in the air, but, um, this is only the first skirt panel and I have plenty more and, um, I'm just, I'm just enjoying working on it. So, uh, let's see what else. So I mentioned my material and this usually comes in really beautiful flat hanks, but my cats got into this one. So they should be just really nice, and there are plenty in here. Nice flat pieces, and I thread these onto my needle, and there's a little bit left on here from when I was working, but 
the needle itself is a needle with two holes. Now, finding this was a big part of why it took me so long to actually start on this gown. Um, I could not get the, the silver material to work with any other needle. Now this is a clover double hold needle. I had actually, I had ordered um, the traditional needle that they use in India for this kind of material. However, my fabric was too delicate because it's kind of a, a square, flat, it's kind of a flat needle. Um, it wasn't fine enough and it was actually poking this fabric. So I might have just gotten a poor quality one because um, I'm sure they know what they're doing. Um, but it just, what I was able to get didn't work for me. So I'm actually using this. It's a clover twin color stitch um, double eye needle, sharp, sharp tip, that's important. Um, and I'm using the middle needle, which is a number 15. And it has two holes. There we go. It has two holes. And I thread the silver in one side and out the other so it makes, it catches itself. And I keep it flat, as flat as possible. Um, I could have gone up a needle, but the to to keep the the broad plate really flat. However, it was too big for my fabric, and it was ruining the fabric. Um, so this feeds through, and the number one thing with this kind of embroidery is um, you cannot screw around and bend this. Once you've got a kink in the metal, it's just a nightmare. So that's part of the reason this has taken so long, because you have to be real slow, real deliberate. Um, I use both hands to guide the material through, and once you got a kink, it's just, it's terrible. Um, because it's metal and it's got memory, it, 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 it's gonna stay there with the kink, it can pull on your fabric, it can create a sharp edge. So, to just take a picture and pop that in there but I can't really see but anyways so the actual doing of the embroidery I don't use knots or anything um, I basically just try to catch some of this underneath and work over it and pinch it down um, and then at the end once a section is done it actually gets flattened further with wooden mallets. And I made a friend um, who does this professionally. I made a friend online from doing this, which I thought was just like the coolest. Um, and he said that they have, because I didn't even know you had to pound this. Um, he said that they have special implements, which are a wooden hammer and like a wooden base. In India and um, I do not have one of those yet so I am just using little wooden mallets and I've covered this one in just a piece of scrap fabric just so while I'm going it doesn't damage my fabric um, and so far it's worked just fine I kind of I don't hold the second one by the handle I kind of hold it just the base And it kind of takes it from, you know, just little little bumps, little bumps, to it flattens it and makes it so shiny. Um, and also, I can tell that it's gonna help with any of the undersides catching on anything. Um, they'll be covered in silk anyway, but um, it just keeps everything nice and real nice and smooth. Uh, let's see. Other than that, I just use a designated scissors for the metal. It's just like you know your basic large scissors um, but these are now my my metal scissors because I don't think it could probably cut anything else after this 
Um, so today, now that I've got this all reset up, and if you have not seen and want to see how I set up my embroidery frame, I did a video on that pre previously, and I'll link it. Um, but um, now I get to just start, and I will do my penciled in, I'll do the embroidery, and then when I get to about the middle, I turn it around, move this little piece of paper towel that I keep to protect the work from my arms, and I will work on that and then advance it again. So, um, can't really think of anything else to mention about this off the bat, but if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask, and um, I will include links to where I found these things, um, anything else I can think of that's relevant. Oh, and behind me, I did want to mention this. It's not plugged in currently, but this is my lamp, which I would highly like to recommend because I work on this a lot at night in low light and you just got to protect your eyes. So I have this lamp. And I wanted to mention it besides just saying a lamp because um, my old lamp just had it on and off and that was it. This lamp, which I will definitely link below, has not only an on and off, but you can dim and brighten and it also can change the tone of the light. So you can do more warm light, brighter light, daylight light, which um, I just find really pleasant so that you don't have like a really harsh um, LED light in your face the whole time like especially if we're trying to watch TV at night or something and I'm working on this um, but always have a lamp and then I also have this this particular lamp also breaks down to a tabletop size so if I'm traveling or anything because we travel a lot in our, um, our travel trailer and um, this is my fun thing I bring along with so um, Anyway, yeah, as I said, any questions, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to share more. And um, as this dress progresses, it'll be pretty boring for a long time because it looks the same no matter how far along I get. But um, I'll keep updated and I have, a, I have a little highlight in my stories on Instagram also where I've kind of um, shared stuff that's, you know, to speak of. Anyways, hope you guys are having a great day. And um, it's almost October, so hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful Halloween. Bye-bye.